So my name is Daniel Stromer and I'm going to present you a collaborative work of my lab, the Pattern Recognition Lab at FAU Erlangen in Nuremberg, together with our Department of Neurology at FAU on automatic dementia screening and scoring by applying deep learning on clock drawing tests or short CDTs. So dementia is one of the most common neurological syndromes in the world. And according to the WHO, the World Health Care Organization, around 15 million people currently have dementia and 10 million new cases are diagnosed each year. And the tendency is here that it uh, will be even more and more um, as the population is getting older, as we all know. So as of today, there is no cure for these kind of syndromes, but the key is actually early detection and subsequent active management that can then dramatically improve patients and caregivers' life qualities. So it's very important to develop optimized diagnostic schemes, which can then help to detect a dementia as early as possible, because if we react in a very late stage, the healthcare costs uh, increase, and also the life quality of the patient is very bad, as we cannot cure these, but need to counter very early. The test we automated in this work is the so-called clock drawing test, CDT. And this is a brief, rapid and inexpensive paper and pencil test that um, patients of risks or patients at all have to do um, in the stage of diagnosing this uh, dementia or cognitive screening. So within this test, an individual has to manually complete a clock on a piece of paper by drawing the numbers 1 to 12, as well as the, um, uh, the clock hands for a certain time setting. Yeah? And here's then screening is used to distinguish between sick and healthy individuals. Um, so pass and fail. And scoring is then a scheme to um, put the patient into a bucket where score one would be healthy and score six would be severely dementia. And our work concentrated of, on both use cases, so screening, pass and fail, and scoring. And therefore we had a data set from our clinical partner here where we have this kind of distribution with um, the highest count in score three, um, and uh, the lowest count in score six with severe dementia, where the score was 35, and a total of 1,315 patients. Um, the scoring was made by the Schoolman uh, uh, score, scoring system, which has some downsides like a high interrater variab variability as well as biases and other influences. And automated methods, evaluation methods, should now help to counter these disadvantages and quantify the CDT scores in a more standardized manner. If you want to read more about it, there are hundreds of papers out there that um, basically um, review these kind of scores, but we took this as our clinical partner use this score, of course. So to automize these evaluations, we used, of course, what else, deep learning methods, um, where we um, concentrated on three architectures that are pretty well known in the scene. So the VGG16, the ResNet152, and the DenseNet121. Um, well, we then um, basically went into the classification layers um, and, uh, and modified them such that they fit to our use cases of classifying pass and fail or classifying the scores one to six. We kept the rest and um, we used, of course, the pre-trained versions on, from ImageNet um, to um, converge towards a solution earlier and everyone knows the uh, the advantages of using these pre-trained models. Um, we split the training set or the set into 842 training, 210 validation and 263 testing images and then used manifold learning 
to counter a bias of a certain class that comes with a random selection. So we we basically started with a random selection, but we figured out that the results were very inaccurate. And well, the steps of these of this manifold learning algorithm is then we start with a dimens dimensionality reduction to see the distribution of the entire data. Then we cluster to find similar data. And then we random select it within these clusters to define to split sets then. In our tests, local linear embedding achieved the best results compared to PCA or principal component analysis, TS and E, as well as a random selection. So from now on, we just talk about uh, local linear embedding here. As a loss function, we use the CE loss, um, which was then additionally weighted for the scoring case, yeah, as we have a multi-class problem, and tried also SGD, RMS prop, and ADAM for optimization of the loss function. And furthermore, we introduced a learning rate scheduler for adapting the learning rate um, individually. Um, details on all of that is um, described in the paper, which you want to check out. For the evaluation, we use the fivefold cross validation. And uh, when we come to the results, you can see that um, we basically with a, a use, um, had, had the best results with a dense net um, together with RMS prop. And therefore, we achieved a accuracy of 96.65% over both classes for the scoring case, uh, for the uh, screening case, and a accuracy of 72% in the scoring case, which is um, shown in figure 4b. Well, this sounds rather poor right now, but if we take a look at the confusion matrix, we can see that the most deviations and misclassifications are on the off diagonal. And for example, here, where um, score one and two basically says this individual is healthy, um, we, um, we came up that we said, um, let's take the off diagonal here as uh, and neglect these factors and put everything into the buckets that is from the misclassified, uh, misclassified on the off diagonal. And if we do that, we come up with an accuracy of 98.45%. And I think we can do that because actually scoring these kind of um, 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 CDTs is also very objective in the real case scenario. And there is kind of a blurry um, transition between the scores. And we have a very high interrate of variability. Um, so I think that, that this is a valid assumption that we can do here and where we can then come up with a very high accuracy. Of course, this can be tackled by in the future by using more than one observer that we had here and doing multi-center studies. But as we just worked with a proof of concept here, I think um, this is a nice start of course, with a lot of potential for great future work here. Maybe some more, um, you can read some more um, details on the results again in the paper that is mentioned below here. And uh, as a conclusion, I think we can say that um, machine learning techniques in this field prove to be very powerful in the domain of healthcare and assisting professionals in clinical decision making. And in this work, we show that deep learning can be a great tool to enable automatic screening and scoring for standardized neurological tests. Our proposed neural network achieved very high AEC and clearly outperformed reported clinical screening results by up to 27, 27%, other machine learning screen techniques by up to 24%, and machine learning scoring approaches by up to 27% too. And these algorithms can be easily integrated into hospitals, environments, and care facilities. And furthermore, due to digitization, the tests can be screened and scored anywhere at any time, making it accessible for everyone 
and countering the lack of stuff and expertise in other areas. Thank you very much for listening to my talk and open for questions then.